Hey, I'm Karen Johnson. I served in the state legislature for 12 years here in Arizona. was the co-chairman of Ron Paul's campaign in 2008 and have done what we could up here in the mountains, the White Mountains, for him here in 2012. And why, why is it you like Ron Paul so much? <laughs> uh, because Ron Paul has integrity, he's honest, and he loves the Constitution, and his platform is liberty. You know, that's what we have to get back to. I mean, we're literally going down the tubes in this country. Uh, because we keep electing the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, we get the same thing. Mm, you probably go down the tubes a little faster with a Democrat than you do a Republican, but you're still on your way down the tubes. But they're pretty, would you say they're pretty much two sides of the same coin? Absolutely. Well, two wings on the same bird. <laughs> I don't know. That's what Pat Buchanan used to say a long time ago. I do not know how Ron Paul has stuck it out as long as he has. I have nothing but the utmost admiration for this man. I mean, I know how old he is, and I'm not very much younger than him, and I know what the rigors are of campaigning. I don't know how he does it. Um, I know that the Lord is truly blessing him, uh, not only shielding him from harm, but strengthening him in every way possible for him to be able to continue to do this. But it simply amazes me um, the contact and the um, the tie that he seems to be having with young people. This to me is the most enthusiastic thing, is to see how he has awakened in the young people their desire for freedom and liberty. I think is, this, is, is Ron Paul's strongest point? Well, his strongest point is that he is consistent in his stand for the Constitution and his belief that we've got to get back to the basic principles of the Founding Fathers. That's what made this country great and strong to begin with, and that's what will once again uh, help us to be that way if we would get back to it. I mean, we have become a socialist Marxist country, and it's, it's pathetic what has happened and I'd like to blame all the politicians. I'd like to blame Obama and Bush and Clinton and all those guys, but I blame the American people. I mean, it's the people that have allowed this to happen to themselves. Right. And that's hard for me to understand, but as I go out and talk with folks at different meetings and at church and et cetera, I mean, I'm amazed at how ignorant they are on the principles of the Constitution and the U.S. history. Uh, the history of this country and, you know, like what happened with the Federal Reserve being instituted and with, um, you know, the income tax and all of these kind of things that they don't really understand or know very little about at all. You served for how many terms in the Arizona legislature? Well, I served for four terms or eight years in the House and for two terms or four years in the Senate. And my husband retired and said, enough, you know, I want you back. And I so, want my honey back, huh? <laughs> and and I didn't realize that retirement was going to be so great. Um, but uh, the political arena is a very, very difficult and a very tough arena, especially if you have morals and especially if you feel strongly about the Constitution because, unfortunately, there's not very many people that get elected that are willing to stick their heads up above the crowd and stand up for principles because you get shot at really bad. But... It's okay, that's what you should be doing, but we don't have very many that will do it. Well, I know you're one of them. Well, I mean, Ron Paul absolutely has been um, a hero of mine for many, many years. You're young, so you probably don't. I remember voting for him when he ran as a libertarian wow. for president. I mean, that's a long time ago. I have always admired him because I thought, here's a man that stands up for principle, for what he believes, and what he believes is in the Constitution. <laughs> and in truth and right. He doesn't give you all of this um, cockamamie stuff that you get from the other candidates. I mean, first they're over here, and then they're over here, and you never know where they're gonna be, and Ron Paul has been so solid for so many years, and I just, I just admire him, and I'm just very grateful that he's put himself out in this way for all these years for the people. I don't know how many times it's been, but I know there's a number of instances when it's 434 to 1. Yeah. And it's always Ron Paul being the, you know, the 
the voice in the in the wilderness, so to speak. And now people are, you know, there's a lot of people that are waking up. And my purpose is to help, because I believe this can be shifted. I really do. I wouldn't be going to these lengths if I didn't think it could be shifted. Well, and, and I appreciate that, Tom. Well, you know, you're one of my heroes. <laughs> you're very kind, and you're very young. <laughs> But that's sweet for you to say that. You know, I've had people say to me, well, Ron Paul, what's he going to accomplish? You know, he's been in Congress all these years and he's hardly passed any bills or he hasn't passed any bills or whatever. And I'm going, that's because this is a man that stands firmly on the foundation of the Constitution. What does that tell you about the rest of the congressmen? You know, I mean, he always has some that come with him. Congressman Jones has been a wonderful, you know, stalwart helper with Ron Paul and worked with him a lot and and there's a few others but he never gets enough to pass good constitutional bills and to me that that's an indictment on the Congress it's very very sad I mean he's consistently trying to pull us back and bring us back to constitutional moorings that we've long ago left if when someone says to you Ron Paul can't win what would be your response <laughs> I'm saying that's nonsense when I look at what he has accomplished in this campaign to see the young people, of course, that I've already talked about, that come out in droves, you know, supporting him. I look at the servicemen who understand where he's coming from when he talks about these unconstitutional wars. Uh, oh, I just, that's a very difficult thing for me to talk about. Um, one of our sons served in Iraq for 13 months after, you know, Bush did his shock and awe mm -hmm. and went in there under duplicitous means, saying that, you know, there was weapons of mass destruction when there never was anything of the sort. I mean, when I think of all of the innocent people that have died, besides our own surface men that have, and women, that have been used as cannon fodder, you know, for the military-industrial complex. So it's pretty sickening, but I look at those people, the service men, that are by far more supportive of Ron Paul than any of the other candidates, because they get it. They understand, you know, what's going on over there and how they're being used. And it just, it makes me ill. But Ron Paul can win. We need to get a constitutionalist, a real honest candidate, not somebody that is just going to, you know, do the same thing these other candidates have done over the years. And we still end up in the horrible deficit that we're in and, and with all these wars that we've got going on, and it's, it's pathetic. Well, I know that you, you received a lot of news being laughing at you and, and make poking fun at you for some of the stances that you've held on a lot of issues. They, they kind of made you out to be, painted you as a, being somebody who you weren't. The thing of it is, it probably just galled the heck out of them that I would continue to get reelected every year because, of course, the district I represented was a very conservative district in Mesa. The people were wonderful there that I was privileged to represent. Uh, very family oriented, uh, very strong with their morals. And a lot of them had done a lot of studying on the Constitution um, with Dr. Cleon Skousen and other people. They'd taken courses and understood a lot more than I think perhaps a large percentage of the people in the state do. But at any rate, they were very supportive of the stands that I took and when I would go back to my district meetings or, or other meetings that were held, I mean, I always would get a, a high five, whatever, you know, hey, keep doing what you're doing. We like it. We're happy with it. We want you to, to stick, <laughs> stick your neck out, so to speak. And um, I was happy to do so. Always had good support from my own children and my husband. I could never have done this without my husband's support. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's... There's just a lot of issues out there that a lot of legislators are very afraid to tackle.